Um, what are your thoughts about here's a here's a young lady who says that it is people of my age, and maybe I don't I, I don't think you're James. No. I don't think you're uh, of, of retirement age, but I certainly am way past retirement age, um, and and certainly I uh, it wouldn't make a lot of difference to me whether I lost my fuel allowance or not. But listen, I've paid tax for fifty odd years, so I don't actually see why I should apologise for anything. But <laughs> this young lady earlier said that people like me uh, were making it difficult for young people to find somewhere to live and uh, and to survive. Yeah, well, good evening. Uh, I mean, that's a point of view. I think perhaps what she wasn't aware of was that there are going to be two and a half million older people who are going to lose their uh, winter fuel payment this winter <clears throat> who are really going to struggle as a result because they're on a very low income. And of course, it's true that some older people have done really well in life and don't need their winter fuel payment. Of course, the argument for having a universal payment is that it's the price you pay, giving it to people like you, James, who don't need it, in order to ensure that the poorest really do receive it. And we know because the government produced the document overnight, uh, which proves that they know too, uh, that loads and loads of older people who are entitled to it aren't going to get it, even though they are very, very poor. And it will cost lives ultimately, won't it? Which will save them more money from the NHS and on pensions in the long run, if you look at it cynically, and it should have been... He's got plausible deniability by saying he didn't do an uh, impact assessment. Well, uh, another government department has produced a sort of impact uh, assessment overnight, and as I say, what it shows is that although uh, some politicians have been saying it's all going to be fine because the poorest are still going to receive it. The government doesn't actually believe that. They no. Are... Well, over 11 grand, you're not going to get it. So that's poor. But, you know, this is the... the hang on. This so, is the... the sorry, sorry to interrupt. The stupidity of this whole thing is that they go on about this £20 billion black hole, which uh, may or may not exist. But if it is uh, in existence, then we could pay half of it off tomorrow yeah. by not giving money to other countries, some of which have a better... £12 uh, billion on net zero around the yeah. world. Only £1.2 billion, the, uh, the, the fuel yeah. allowance. And well, they're we... going to take the 25% single person's yeah. discount probably as well. So they're just a bunch of idiots. Well, we're um, could, wouldn't possibly say that. I work for a charity and we work with all political parties. I and wouldn't just... ask you to say it, I'll say it. But are they evil? Are they evil? I mean, people are going to uh, die because of this. Either. And actually, to disappoint you and your viewers, um, Age UK has an international arm called Age International, which works to support um, older people <laughs> in trouble right around the world. So we are in, very much in support of foreign aid. So I don't think there's, a, there's an easy win What about there. British pensioners who are going to freeze to death? Wouldn't you rather help them first? I would rather help both. I think that's the point. We, can't, don't... we don't have the money to help both. We're in a black hole. Why mm. on earth, and I'm not, I'm not being too hard on you, but I'm tempted, uh, why on earth would somebody from Age UK come on and say, well, we're helping people abroad? Because a lot of our viewers and listeners at the moment say, well, I'm not giving them any more money if they keep uh, spending on They have a higher abroad. per capita GDP. They're richer than us as well, some of these countries. It doesn't help all the people right around the world. We just, like it says on the tin, we work in the UK, but there's a sister charity to Age UK called Age International, which absolutely does. And I support their work. I think they do a fantastic job. Well, I don't, um, and I think yeah. a lot of people actually watching and listening will agree. Until we get our finances in this country, Caroline, sorted out, we cannot afford to do everything else. We try to be the, the, the mother and father mm. of this world, and, you know, let's face it, under Britain, people have... We used to be. We're not like that anymore. You know, We're poor. We've got half the, half the average wage of America. We're almost third world in this country now, and people don't realise it. The train driver's on 60 grand. That's what a working man should be earning. I don't, I don't think it's a matter of either or, and I do, I'm not disputing that the public finances are in a mess and need to be out, but I think there are better ways to pay, pay off the uh, money that we need to pay off than actually taking it from pensioners on very, very low incomes. Um, exactly. Yeah, well, exactly. So you agree, actually? On that we agree, but I think the, the fact is that if you are a pensioner and you did quite well, you probably contributed more to, than a lot of other people to the, the pot, and even if you know, you, you you test people to see if they deserve it. That in mm. itself costs an enormous they amount of money. They could just put it on a tax ban. They could put yep. it on a 40% tax ban, so yep. you'd only get 170 quid. You know, it? the problem is that the people Seriously. who don't need it will spend it anyway, so the money will go back into the economy. That's true, but I think there is an argument for asking older people who have got means to pay a bit more one yes. way or another.
Yes. Well, when you get old, let me tell you, you've probably got other things more important on your mind. He spends well, his on ice cream. I've got less than a year to go before I'm a pensioner, so this is very much front of my mind as well. And I think I will be able to pay a bit more, but I know plenty of people who won't. Yeah. And my worry, and our worry at Age UK, is the people who are really going to struggle through this winter. So we think the government's made a mistake, but I'm afraid we don't think that the way to get out of it is to take money out. How of many it. lives will it cost? Have you done an impact assessment yourself, being uh, Age UK? We, well, funnily, funnily enough, you should ask that because we are preparing our own impact assessment. Uh, given that the government has been very slow to release theirs, or possibly never made one in the first. They, they did one when one. the Tories were in power, and they said four thousand would die. All of a sudden, they can't work it I, out. The honest truth is nobody can put a number on it. I think it's a guess, to be honest. Well, 30,000 excess deaths in the winter period anyway, as it is, which is a disgrace. Yeah. So there should be a lot more anyway out for them. You have to understand that those are more or very often thought to be more to do with the effectiveness of the flu vaccine than it is to do with people freezing to death in their own homes. Mm, of course. They would say that. Well, I would say that is what the science tells us, so we follow the facts. What does the science tell you? You get two you? scientists, you get three conclusion the science tells you that the flu vaccine is the one that's not getting it is the one that's killing the excess 30,000 so the number of deaths in the winter is usually more to do with how effective the flu vaccine is because as you may know flu is a real threat to older people yeah, but you very... get it in a cold house won't you if you're in a warm house you're less likely to get it <laughs> Do you think for a minute that unfortunately this policy decision will lead to some people dying who might not otherwise have done so? Exactly. But mm. Putting a number on it is very, very hard, and we would we wouldn't do that because it would be a guess. Okay, uh, Caroline, thank you very much indeed, Caroline Abraham's director Thanks, of Caroline. Age UK. What? I mean, you can't just say it's a guess on one hand and then say no. science on the other hand. And I, I'm I'm amazed actually, to be quite honest. Yeah. You know, we are a country in quite a lot of debt. And it would have been debt. Whoever been in power before, because of, you know, the the pandemic and because of the the wars, we would be in debt. Quantitative but easing. I mean, why did they lock us down when there was this Omicron? The set. It was ridiculous. That was. It <clears throat> yep. wasn't even dangerous. The, the you know, the, the whole fact is we are where we are, and we're giving money to other countries mm. when we with could... space programs yeah. with yeah. a higher GDP per yeah. capita. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. Li li listen, twenty billion apparently the black hole. Well, ten billion on foreign aid. Twelve billion. 12 billion. Uh, is it twelve billion on yeah. foreign Nine aid? Nine billion to the unions, and then they're going on strike again. Yeah. And, and so there'll be more unions. Coming. We could easily have have filled the black hole yeah. without doing anything. Take a break.